Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guy. It's a phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This is our season four recap. Believe it or not, season four is over. Sonny has amnesia. He met his kid again earlier in the season. <laughs> he was reintroduced to his kid. <laughs> this is our chance to look back at season four, talk about some of our favorite moments from the show, and then look ahead to what is coming in season five. Now, again, me and John have never seen the show before, so this will be our first time through. And Melissa's just chomping at the bit to get to the next episode of Amnesia. I'm ready. <laughs> so this is our chance to look back and talk about the things that we really, really loved about season four. And to be totally honest with you, it's not the best season of Miami <laughs> Vice when you look through the episodes as a whole. Yeah, when you go back through the, the episodes as a whole, it's definitely a stretch to pick favorites. <laughs> the goal of season four was to kind of get back on track where it was some serious and some silly. There's a lot of silly. <laughs> <laughs> they got the silly down. Well, you know, you say it's not the best season, but I mean, how many other seasons have we had dead floating Jamaicans, <laughs> aliens, dueling televangelists, a whole episode about bull semen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was really educational. Hey, just, <laughs> just by the way, just to let you know, Trump's recent proposal for tariffs on China includes bull semen. Just saying. Well, that's a thing. No. <laughs> well, well how true. are we going to get into your cows now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Now we're worried. Now I'm, now I'm worried about this. We're going to do like what we've always done. You know, without is... those minute cows, we can't make string cheese. <laughs> <laughs> just comes right out as string cheese. <laughs> We're going to do what we normally do, which is we talk about our favorite guest stars, our favorite episodes, and then we'll talk about what we thought about season four as a whole, and then look forward to season five. So let's go talk about what our thoughts are on episodes and guest stars in this episode. All right, guys, this is kind of breaking our normal format. We normally have a chance to talk about a Miami Vice open and about Crockett's hair being too short for the driving scene that he's in. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> but, you know, we're just going to kind of do a round table here of best guest stars, best episodes. Best guest stars is definitely a thing that we talk about every single week. Like the guest stars is a huge part of Miami Vice. Guest stars, music, and then we're going to talk about our favorite episodes. Before we start, just one quick thing. I normally talk about directors and writers for the show. So we'll make a couple quick mentions in season four. One, Don Johnson directed one episode in this season, in case you forgot, in which his Willie was in danger. And it was not a bad episode. <laughs> <laughs> I find it really hard to believe that he only got three calls on that dating service. Yeah, too. I mean, come on. Uh -huh. We saw I the other guy. I find it hard to believe he directed one episode. <laughs> <laughs> the great Bill Duke directed the episode Baseballs to Death. So just in case you were wondering what the Predator Hunter was up to, mm -hmm. it was a very topical episode and very interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, our featured director, the one that was most often behind the camera is Richard Compton, who we've said a bunch and he was a bunch at the end of the season. As far as writers go, Dick Wolf was clearly in charge of this season. He wrote five episodes. He was also the teleplay writer on like almost every single one of them. So like basically Dick Wolf wrote every single episode. He had his hand in every episode. So let's talk about this, our favorite guest stars. And let's do our round table. And John, how about you kick us off? We're going to go three, two, one. What is your third favorite guest star from season four? So my third favorite is Stanley Tucci as Frank Mosca. He actually got guest star in two episodes. Contempt of Court and Blood and Roses. Miami Vice was nearly the Frank Mosca sandwich. Like it was almost beginning and end. Yes. Almost the end. Yes. And, and what I loved about it was one, I've seen a lot of Stanley Tucci's work since Vice. And it was, it, it surprised me seeing him as like a, a tough guy mob boss because I don't normally know his characters to be that. <laughs> as a bonus. <laughs> but John, I am going to agree with you. My third favorite guest star is Stanley Tucci as well. Whoa. Frank Mosca is a great villain, by the way. Like for oh, yeah, Vice, for sure. like yeah. he is for that's, sure yeah. a great villain. Up there with like mm -hmm. Lombard and Calderon and Hackman. He has pretty dark storylines. He's a uh, constantly teasing the Vice team. He owns his own pasta factory. <laughs> I mean, what else could you want? <laughs> <laughs> He's the evil chef boy RD. <laughs> 
he was, you know, past tense. So. Yeah, he was past tense. <laughs> Apparently, it's not safe to bone Gina. She's kind of a black widow. Apparently, that might be. <laughs> I really like the Frank Mosca episodes. They were fun. I like that they actually ended his storyline, too, and it looked like spoiler yeah. season five because the Lombard storyline is going to get taken care of in season five as well. So I just appreciate when storylines in. Melissa, <laughs> pass it on to you. <laughs> what is your third favorite My guest third star? was Isaac Hayes from mm. Child's Play. My favorite part of him is getting beat up by Crockett. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Crockett getting, getting to smack him around a little bit. And he's looking at Tubbs like, what the hell is wrong with your white friend? <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing in here? <laughs> Actually, I, I enjoyed that also for Sonny Tough Guy. Um, yeah, because I I enjoy uh t- Tough Guy Burnett. Um, I actually had Isaac Hayes as Holiday as my number two. Mm. Well, see, there you go. <laughs> a lot of crossover here, <laughs> like mine. <laughs> All right, so my number two guest star Brian Dennehy. Oh, yes. as Bill Bob Proverb. I mean, the best preacher in town. <laughs> Look, that, yes, that <laughs> episode was silly. I'm not going to say, especially in the case of that there was an illegal use of lightning. And that's what the duo were investigating. <laughs> but Brian Dennehy as a televangelist was great. Feel good. Send money. Like, <laughs> he is right on it. It's perfect. He was great as Bill Ball Proverb. And also in that episode, don't forget, he ends up not being the bad guy at the end. Yeah, you think he's a bad guy, but mm-hmm. he's not. He's not the bad guy, and they so, are protecting him. And so it's safe to send him money. Please send a check of $5 <laughs> to Brian. <laughs> <laughs> he will bless you and your baby. <laughs> I thought it was great that they went after televangelists, too, mm-hmm. in the era of yeah. Jerry Falwell and other scandals that yes. were happening that, in televangelism. In the that, was a, that was definitely one of their very topical... Mm. episodes and it was right in the beginning of the yeah. season too it was only the second episode of the season exactly. so i really enjoyed brian dennehy it's one of my it's, it's one of the characters i'll probably never forget well for sure yeah. <laughs> like he is he is perfect so we've talked about number three we have a lot of crossover here stanley tucci for me and john melissa had isaac hayes as number three john had isaac hayes as number two as well i had brian dennehy as number two so melissa who's your number two guest star mine was julia roberts mm, i Holly. from mirror oh. image because she was of all the floozies that he slept with <laughs> i mean he slept with a lot of floozies <laughs> in his day as, as you know the ones where he's yes. not supposed to sleep with them this one he could have it was okay but she was the okayest of them <laughs> She, she was definitely <laughs> the okayest of the flu. See, Julia, Julia Fiona Roberts almost made my list. I wanted to throw a middle name out there because for some <laughs> I reason, like that name. I, I, no, I have to go the rest of my life knowing her middle name for no apparent reason. <laughs> she almost made my list, but her character, uh, sadly enough, was slightly racist. And so yeah, I just true. couldn't bring her. <laughs> Well, Melissa, I want you to just keep going. Who's your number one favorite guest star in season four of Miami Vice? Actually, this one was not a difficult one for me. Right away when we when I started thinking about guest stars, I was like, okay, I already know who that is. It's Isai Morales mm. and God's work. I thought that mm. was a really great episode and he was really good in it. It was there's nothing there was no joke to be made about it on that one. <laughs> I just thought he was no. really good. It was a, yeah. Yeah, he had a strong performance and it was, you know, I felt really sad for him and it was <laughs> It was a sad. That was the first line. episode of the season where we were all in agreement. Like this is a great yeah. episode. So no, there was no, I'm, I love him anyway. Mm-hmm. So I was happy to see him. For the most mm-hmm. part, we rated almost every episode we of season four as like the okayest yeah. episode of Ice. <laughs> <laughs> John, what is your number one guest star? James Brown as Lou DeLong from <laughs> Missing Hours. I just couldn't help myself. James Brown playing an R and B legend who is the spokesperson for Astro Life, the alien people. <laughs> um, and then he pop in Trudy's Dream. It was just a weird episode. And then to also include, to, to, all of a sudden, here's James Brown. Um, yeah. it, it just <laughs> made it fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> On a side note, it's funny that James Brown is essentially playing Dan Aykroyd now. True. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I really thought James Brown so, was playing himself. So <laughs> that's what I was going on. Like, oh. <laughs> it's so tempting. It's so tempting. Not just to pick James Brown from Missing Hours, but Chris Rock. Chris yeah, Rock he was good in that. Was too. Great yeah. in that too. Yes. And I, I wanted to pick both, but I couldn't do it. 
I couldn't pick them as being my favorite guest star. Now, technically, my number one guest star did not actually appear in an episode. <laughs> but my favorite guest star is Gargantua from The Callous of October. He's my <laughs> pick from my favorite guest star of this season. He's just got, as you say, big dick energy. <laughs> <laughs> He sh- yo, he I can't remember. Did they even did they did they at least show us like a picture of yes, him? Or? There yeah. was a picture, and then Sunny okay. points out that he's not actually as big as what or as small as what everyone makes him out to be. Yeah, because there's something with the shadow. They did a whole uh, episode about him. He had a big old. <laughs> yeah, he's known for having a big penis, uh-huh. and everyone wants the semen. He's got to be the greatest guest star <laughs> in the history of Miami Vice. <laughs> a bulls, yes. <laughs> we also. Want to make a quick shout out to everyone's least favorite guest star of season four. We're going to say goodbye, Sheena Easton. Goodbye forever. <laughs> Don't come back. <laughs> I think she comes back in flashback form, but other than that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think. I do want to do an honorable mention for some of the co stars, the lesser known role players of season four Vice. We had. A therapist, a family therapist, dermatologist, <laughs> um, someone that throws professional parties, like charity parties, and a, a few other golden gems of co-stars. So, so here's to you guys, a little golf clap. <laughs> also, shout out to all the people in Miami Vice that were in previous seasons that reappeared as different the characters. Multiple, yeah, they had mm-hmm. multiple roles. Yes. yes. Including Stanley Tucci, who was on our list of oh, yeah, favorite guest stars. He was in our previous season as a different character. Mm-hmm. And spoiler, John Leguizamo next season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and no one will notice that he's not Orlando Calderon anymore. I mean, it was, you know, he didn't have that big <laughs> yes. of a part in anything. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He does actually, he's not still alive somewhere with Tubbs Jr. <laughs> So those are our favorite guest stars. Let's talk about our favorite episodes. Now, this one's much harder to come up with on the list because we like to have a little fun with the guest stars. And there's lots to reach to because there's other people we didn't mention that had smaller parts like Ben Stiller. Yeah, he was I, pretty I, I good in his too. role. Mm-hmm. So like, it's kind of fun to pick out the guest stars, but the best episodes are a little bit harder to choose. So I will start with my third favorite episode of the season. And my third favorite goes to Vote of Confidence. Surprise. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> when I was going down the list of episodes, I was like, no one's picking that one. <laughs> they do real police work in this one. Beginning to end, it's also a very like quasi-modern politics. Like It's kind of a timeless talk to because of the whole whore train and corrupt <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they prefer for ho train okay not whore train ho train <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of parallels between today mm-hmm. and then so there's a lot of crossover we also get to see how far iad is willing to go that they bring in the duo and and under suspicion that they're working under political motives to investigate the governor yeah and then he goes, he disappears and he comes back. He didn't learn his lesson. And then the district attorney is in bed essentially with the governor. So she, because she gives the duo like the runaround on yeah. trying to do the investigation. So he's the wannabe governor. He's not the governor yet. There's just a lot of. Yeah. So I really like that episode. Now that I'm looking back on it, I really did enjoy that episode. John, what is your number three okayest episode of Miami <laughs> Vice? I am going with the big thaw. I have to. I, 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 Where I've else got do you a, get a frozen Rastafarian? <laughs> exactly. It's got a frozen Rastafarian. Let's go through. So they find a frozen Rastafarian. They find out he was killed death by blowfish. <laughs> I forgot about that part yet. <laughs> There's this Jamaican hat house band that like travels around playing just reggae everywhere they go. <laughs> by trailer. They get pulled on a trailer plane. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> the body goes missing, so they lose the body. Got Izzy making deals, and it all ends with the body just forever floating out to sea. <laughs> so, and then on top of all of that, we get the fantastic music of Bob Marley. So, yeah, I can um, agree to that. Good I can music. Agree with that. 
I think of all of the silly episodes in four, this reminded me a lot of the silly season one, season two e- mm-hmm. episodes where it was just a lot of fun. And I'm not even sure a crime was committed <laughs> throughout the entire episode, but it was just nice. You had a bunch of Izzy you had, and I mean, you had great music and frozen Rastafarian. I mean, how can you beat that? None of us were prepared that there would be a Rastafarian popsicle in Miami (laughs) Vice. Like, that was not a thing that any of us were expecting. And it was, like, episode three of the season. Yeah, right off the bat. And also, don't forget, Manny had a big part in that episode and didn't say anything. Of course, he never said anything. (laughs) Yes. And I'm gonna, we're gonna find out who Manny is. So we're we're gonna figure it out before this podcast ends. Manny, call into the show, email us, go to the gmail.com. If you're Manny, email us. We have a $15 iTunes card with your <laughs> name on it. If you get... <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, what's your number three episode well, of season four? I feel like this might be controversial. Not with us, between us, but maybe with the maybe with the listeners, maybe. But I'm going with Baseballs of Death. Mm. I know a lot of people don't like that episode. Mm. Like Miami Vice fans don't like that. I like that episode. I thought it was great. It had a villain. He was a real villain. I mean, mm. how could you get past that first that scene where he... The, he goes into that alley and he kills those people. <laughs> it's like the the strobe light and the yeah, fog the machines and in the... there and all there. Um, also, it had a, a beginning and an end. There was an actual end to it, which we all love when they give us an ending. He was a bad Hit guy. That boat ramp and explode. Let's yeah, get this episode over exactly. with. Exactly. <laughs> there was also that <laughs> the reuse of a boat ramp scene. <laughs> I mean, how can you get past that? Also, uh, you know, there's corruption in it. He was a pervert. That's not a good part, but <laughs> that's just there too. <laughs> we have that scene where he's trying to get if someone's his friend is trying to get him a hooker, basically, but she's not a hooker. She's just a regular lady, and she's like, "No, I don't want to sleep oh, with your yeah. friend. That's disgusting." Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll move on to number two. My number two favorite episode from season four, Miami Vice, Honor Among Thieves. This is the first <laughs> real episode where it's straight up modern style cop show. Very true. So we have a serial killer mm-hmm. who talks to dolls and is also a drug dealer. And the drug dealers are fed up with him ruining their good name. And so they have to hunt him down. This is like something straight out of Criminal Minds. Or it SBU is. or yeah. something. Like this is Dick Wolf testing yes. the waters mm-hmm. before Law and Order comes out. Yeah. So it had a little bit of everything. It had a psychopath. <laughs> it had Crockett being a lawyer. <laughs> well, that's the best. <laughs> it had Tubbs <laughs> fighting a racist <laughs> and Bubba or whatever it was. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like you, pal. I don't like you either. <laughs> the episode rolls along. There's the big twist when you see that he's a dealer on that board too which i wasn't expecting that that's where the time was going to be i thought he was going to be some other street dealer that is also on like who they battle against or something like that and so then it's going to ramp up the street war or something and then it was another twist where he's also the informant to the vice team so now they have to work this crazy angle and of course the only way you could end that is by having him talking in his doll voice and jumping and killing the actual person they were trying to investigate. <laughs> what about the dolls he killed? He lit them on fire. <laughs> All those silent screams. 1,100 funerals in one day. <laughs> yes. John, what's your number two favorite episode from season four? So my number two is The Cows of October. Come on. <laughs> Izzy. Old seaman. I mean, Izzy um, in the cowboy outfit alone. <laughs> just the fact that this guy convinced FBI agents, Cuban agents, gangsters, and Vice all that gargantuan's um, <laughs> uh, mini bowl juice was worth a hundred grand each. <laughs> so, and yeah, and it is great. Once again, ov- uh, obviously, another Izzy episode. If we're going silly, then I think Izzy kind of needs to be there. One of the guest stars, Harry Shearer, who 
actually I didn't know until uh, I did the guest stars was uh, the voice of all those characters in The Simpsons, like Flanders and Mr. Burns and stuff. He plays FBI agent T- Timmy Anderson. And you remember he's that he's like really weird for an FBI agent. Mm-hmm. And they have that really strange like showdown where like one of them's in like the car, the <laughs> truck that drives on the railroad tracks. Yes, exactly. It's like, what is going on right now? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and like the Vice just watched the whole thing happen. And that is just the best episode. And the fact that the guy basically scams everyone throughout the whole episode. We are, I mean, come on, a miniature bull named Gargantua. <laughs> he also just just remember he also scammed Stan out of thousands of dollars and insinuated that he had a great night with the ladies. Yeah, so, what was that about? <laughs> I love the Cows of October. I love it for all the wrong reasons, right? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's hilarious. Yes. It has a certain yes. theme mm-hmm. that runs throughout the whole thing, including the music. I probably had the most fun recording that episode as far as the podcast goes as well. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Melissa, what is your number two favorite episode? Well, I mean, this seems like an easy one, but Bullet for Crockett, because it's mm. like you get to go through the whole scene, the whole entire show in one episode. Go to also, that staring window. You get that staring window that's always got rain at it. It's perfect. You get the doctor who just rode a horse or had a poop. I'm not really sure still. I still uh, think he had Dr. something Dr. Dermatologist. <laughs> Turns out he, he's not that good at taking out bullets out of your spine, but he can. he's there. So, you know. <laughs> He's there for you. Third time's the charm. Outside. Yeah. <laughs> Izzy had a magic rock that almost killed Crockett. I mean, he was there to help out a friend. I mean, I don't like the sad parts, obviously, where they went back and looked at the sad things that happened. But they did a lot of cocaine. <laughs> okay, Melissa, why don't you go ahead and go straight to your number one favorite episode in this season. What's numero uno? Numero uno. Well, this is like I kind of touched on it in when I talked about guest stars. But God's work is my favorite episode of the season. There's nothing to laugh. Like I said, there's nothing to laugh about. It's just a yep. really, really good episode. It's, it touches like on a very mm-hmm. hard topic to do in the 80s to do appropriate and not be mm-hmm. something that would have been offensive to mm-hmm. people in general. And I thought they did a really good job. It was very like there was a lot of emotion to it. And it was something that you didn't expect. Like when I watched that episode for the first time, I didn't expect that Eastside Morales' character was going to be gay. Mm-hmm. And that, that there was this huge. That, that was going to be the storyline. Yeah. It was going to be about AIDS exactly. and like how they're being shunned. Yep. Yeah, no, it was really well done. Yeah. And there's mm-hmm. there's also there's the killing of the priest, which is a kind of a risque thing to do in any era to have a priest be killed. So mm-hmm. I felt like it was a great episode. There's like, mm-hmm. like I said, there's nothing funny about it. There's nothing to joke about, but it was a good episode and good acting. And everyone did a pretty good job, like as in the police work too. Mm-hmm. And uh, and also, actually, my favorite part of that is that you get to see Castillo and his past. And he was like happy when he was with his fr- his priest friend, and it was like, oh, it's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll keep the serious train rolling, and I'll say my number one favorite episode from season four: "Deliver Us from Evil." It's the continuation of the Frank Hackman story, the evilest of all evil villains in Miami Vice. He cons Sonny to get him off of death row to then come back and murder his wife and unborn child. Mm -hmm. There's still questions Mm -hmm. about when he shot Caitlin in that club, if that was their big heist, that that was his plan all along, regardless of Sonny shooting his wife slash girlfriend. Yeah, who knows? Like That was his plan all along. That's what he was going to do. Just saying there's lots of potential there for all kinds of different conspiracy theories of people who are up against Sonny. And then at the Mm -hmm. end of the episode, he goes out to the island and murders half hack and murders Hackman in cold blood. Nah, it wasn't that cold. And then plants a gun. (laughs) Oh, here we go. (laughs) Which I was going to end with. Yep. The biggest controversy in Go With The Heat history is if it's planted or hidden. The debate continues to rage on. For the record, there's multiple people on on the internet that agree with me. (laughs) Check Uh, our social media Hey, you want me to go to the internet and find someone that agrees with me? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure they're out there. (laughs) <laughs> we can go to Twitter with this. <laughs> I love that episode. And I thought it was really well done. Season four ends with a bang. <laughs> that's so, for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> literally. <laughs> and it's just the beginning of the uh, unbelievable path that Sunny goes down. John, what is your number one favorite episode from season four? My number one is 
your number two, Honor Among Thieves. Mm, uh, nice. I love the creepy doll killer. And I actually <laughs> kind of stayed quiet because I, I didn't want to give up the surprise. But <laughs> that episode's great because, one, it, it's there is a ton of actual vice police work. There's They're undercover in a drug cartel or like a drug gang. Then you have the serial killer informant on top of that and i already pointed out that that's cop show 101 dating back probably to vice i love the gang tribunal where they all get together and try and, and try serial killer <laughs> you know we got benny the flasher the the <laughs> pedophile dude with a bag who, of full of porn <laughs> yes with the bag of porn which was great so and then like you said like it it ends with the doll killer body slamming Palmo to death. <laughs> like, literally body slams him to death, you know? That is just such a great episode. And it's such a true Vice episode in a season where we didn't get very many of those. Very true. Very true. We actually, now that I'm thinking really hard about it, not too many hooker storylines in season four, is there? Why do you sound so disappointed? <laughs> no. They're Vice. They spent more time investigating doing homicides job than they did looking up hookers. Well, sorry. There's more homicides than hookers, I guess. <laughs> Very true. No wonder we didn't do the girls much. <laughs> we heard it here, guys. The best episode of season four is Honor Among Thieves. Just saying. Oh. Two votes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got two votes. Um, one of two you votes. also picked yes. <laughs> the cow semen episode. <laughs> <laughs> and the frozen popsicle Jamaican. Are you poo pooing my picks? Because I think I, I, I think I've got some pretty strong episodes here. No, so I'm just saying, it was a I'm tough call. Saying. I almost picked. I almost picked the episode where Rocket almost gets his his wiener nabbed. Um, <laughs> I, I almost went with that, but there's a little too much Sheena Easton. So. <laughs> so there's obviously some honorable mentions like Amen Send Money. I was a big fan of that episode. I think we're all big fans of Missing Hours just for all the wrong reasons that why Vice made it. I think we, we enjoyed that episode because fans. we like to laugh. As in, like, no, I don't like that episode at all. <laughs> Gotta say, like, if, if we hadn't been watching the show for this, I would have skipped right over that episode. Just going to put it out there so that everyone knows, too. Is you didn't hear one episode as listed as our favorite episodes because we specifically left it off. And that's Mirror Image was not allowed to be picked to be your favorite episode of this season. Why? Because it was going to be everyone's number yeah. one favorite episode of yeah. the season. Yes, it was the best episode of the season. Who does not love Evil Burnett? I know. <laughs> the only thing better is that he gets a ponytail. He is so much better. <laughs> oh, oh, if he got a ponytail, man, I'm watching that. Uh, tell me he gets a ponytail in season five. He does. As Burnett, when, when he continues on his, his uh, tirade, basically, of being <laughs> Burnett, he has a ponytail. That's the best Crockett ever. <laughs> He's the hottest with a ponytail. Going a ponytail. <laughs> I, I only can't remember if Tubbs has the beard and he has the because that's too much for me right there. <laughs> Tubbs beard, Tubbs ponytail, Crockett. That's just too much eye candy in one show. I can't handle it. <laughs> so yeah, we specifically left off mirror image, and we're obviously not going to go too much to detail about that episode right now because we literally just talked about it last week. But it is by far, hands down, the best episode of season four. I mean, it, it's pretty close to being the best episode of a lot of seasons. It's it's a pretty true, <laughs> yeah, a pretty iconic episode. It's got a stronger plot. You you know, keeps you engaged all the way through. And I've said it before, I really like tough guy Burnett, and like to see Burnett. As a real bad guy, it reminds me that Don Johnson plays a heck of a bad guy. Absolutely. Well, before we give our full season four recap on where we stand with this season, let's go talk about the music that was in this season. There was a lot of good ones and a lot of new bands. Not a lot of Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> let's go look at the season four music. All right, John. Season four did have some great music. It also had an episode with no music. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the best music from season four. This year, for my recap, we're going to do things a little different. We're going to do the season four music awards. 
So <laughs> went through season four of music and I, I made a few categories. I'm going to read you the nominees and then we're going to discuss one. <laughs> so our first category is most appearances in season four. Who do you think was the artist that we saw or heard from the most in the most episodes? So in the most different segments. Um. Oh, hold on. I know. I know this band. It's a. It's a smaller band. It's. It's got a funny name. Uh, I'm gonna go with Big Pig just because that's the only thing I can think of. But I know that's not right. Melissa, do you have a guess? No, <laughs> I don't. <They laughs> like a, Cheney Easton. I don't know. They got a funny name. Oh, and they've been it's in a previous actually, season too. It's. It's actually a tie between Sheena Easton See? and the band <laughs> Yellow. There you, it so is. You had it, yeah. Yellow. I, I thought she Easton. I was like, it's not yes. Easton. She's in every, uh, almost every episode. <laughs> Sheena Easton is in Love at First Sight, Deliver Us from Evil, and Like a Hurricane. But Yellow is in Indian Wars, The Rising Sun of Death, and Contempt of Court. And so the award, we're going to give it to Yellow because Sheena Easton was also a guest star in those episodes. And they just, there's just a fan of yellow somewhere on the Miami Vice staff because <laughs> exactly. this is their fifth total different episode for good old Dieter Meyer. Dieter Meyer. <laughs> My baloney has a first name. It's D I E T E R. <laughs> and Boris Blank, the members of yellow. So, congratulations on most appearances in season four. Our next category is most obscure artist of season four. We had a lot of random ones. Everything from goofy band names to people born in a different century. So <laughs> ultimately, uh, I I went with the three nominees from pretty much the same episode. Dimitri Tomkin, Ennio Maricone, and Elmer Bernstein. Because Miami Vice made me learn more this season <laughs> about turn of the century depression era composers <laughs> That I've ever wanted to learn, and now I know the origin behind the theme songs for <laughs> Red River, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like I know way more about that stuff than I ever cared to know. <laughs> so what a snub! And, Hoagie's just sitting it out in the <laughs> audience, just stunned. <laughs> the award goes to Dmitry Tomkin, the Russian music composer who made a name for himself at turn of the century <laughs> composing songs for westerns <laughs> so even partially responsible for rawhide <laughs> next category is best repeat offender so guys who appeared in our music this year uh, who was the best artist to appear in our music this year who has he appeared in at least one other season? I think the easy one is Peter Gabriel. But I don't know that John would say he was the best. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, the nominees, we'll, we'll just go. The nominees are going to be the most often repeaters, the worst offenders. Peter Gabriel, Phil Collins, or Glenn Fry. Oh, that's oh, right. right. I forgot about Glenn Fry because it's the same song for in Bullet for Crockett. Oh, the, the crowd sits in silence because <laughs> Glenn Fry was also, and Phil Collins are both in an episode. Peter Gabriel is the only one of the three that never actually appeared in an episode. So I, th I think we're going Peter Gabriel here. Mm hmm. The winner is Glenn Fry. How can you oh! choose against Smuggler Blues? <laughs> Outlaw Country, baby. <laughs> <laughs> only a few more categories to go. Let's go with best band name. Your nominees are going to be Jesus and Mary Chain, The Hooters, Big Pig, or Echo and the Bunny. Mm, Echo and the Bunny yeah. man, is a great band name. So is Big Pig. I don't know. I love the name Big Pig so much. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got to give it to Big Pig. <laughs> Not only do they have the name Big Pig, but they have like 27 drummers True. and 19 <laughs> singers just screaming yes. into microphones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that is just what makes it push us up right over the top is that uh, just Google a band, uh, Google Big Pig if you ever want to see a band with nine drummers with safe search on <laughs> and no guitars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our next category is biggest name in music this season. So we have Pop, who appeared in Blood and Roses with Winners and Losers. We had James Brown in Missing Hours with I Got You. And Aerosmith pops up in Honor Among Thieves with Ragdoll. Or Four 
the Smiths with in the episode The Rising Sun with Last Night I Dreamt That Somebody Loved Me. I'm going with Aerosmith because the Smiths are a bunch of nobodies. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about Stevie Penny Morrissey? Yeah, that doesn't even. <laughs> Stevie <laughs> Patrick? Attempt it in this house. <laughs> Good old Stevie Patty. Stevie exactly. Patty. <laughs> and you don't even like Aerosmith. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so the winner is Aerosmith. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe next year. Maybe season five. I'm sorry, but James Brown. Oh, True. Aerosmith over James Brown. <laughs> I want to recount. <laughs> ah, hey, you know. <laughs> our last nominee, uh, I mean, our, our last category is going to be for best song in an episode. So our nominees are going to feature James Brown's I Got You, I Feel Good in Missing Hours. We've got Good Golly Miss Molly in Rockin' a Hard Place by Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. Or Pump Up the Volume by Mars in Baseballs at Death, which is, as you know, Ferris Bueller Flash Twix song. <laughs> I am going with Mars because it's because of the name M slash A slash R slash R slash S. Can you spell it right? <laughs> Melissa, what's your vote on this? James Brown, because he got robbed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> joking. <laughs> joking. We got to give James Brown one of the awards. James Brown, congratulations. You got best song. So off with, in my opinion, or, uh, well, guys, what was the worst and best music segment of the season? <laughs> best and worst. Oh, yeah. So worst is easy. Because there's a whole episode with no music. Yeah, that's so for you sure. You didn't exactly. even have a chance to talk about music. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Hell Hath No Fear is by far the worst music segment because there was no music in the episode. I was <laughs> winging it the whole time, just saying names and <laughs> <laughs> making up stuff. <laughs> making up facts, yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys think was the best segment of this season the best episode like the, the episode with the best music it's it's super tempting to say the certain theme that was running through the <laughs> cows of october yeah i know right because <laughs> it made uh, john do such research he never thought he'd do but bullet for crockett because it's got all the it looks back to all the music that happened yep. in those scenes too That's which what includes I would say. like pat benatar and stuff that weren't even in this season yeah thank you we are all agreement a bullet for crockett it had the most songs of any episode with six plus it was a clip show so I am not even exactly sure what I said during that segment. <laughs> I'm sure it was fantastic. <laughs> Don't you mean clip-tastic? <laughs> clip-tastic. <laughs> and that's your music. Season four took us down a path in music that was totally unexpected because there were so many unknown, like small bands or Scottish punk bands yeah. like all this random bands from new zealand like it was all over the map so let's go give now our final thoughts on season four and a quick look ahead to what's coming in season five all right guys let's keep a little loose no real official round table i'm just gonna talk about some things that happened in season four you guys just jump in as you with your thoughts overall thoughts on season four so just a reminder in this season Sonny gets married and then mourns the death of his wife and then gets amnesia. Like, that's how far things get stretched in this season. Don't forget that he almost gets attacked by a vibrator. <laughs> that, that needs to be noted. And <laughs> that there's a whole bureau of the FBI who are dedicated to people cutting off penises. <laughs> They're the wiener police. Penis-related crimes. <laughs> <laughs> they tried really hard to bring the silliness back into my advice, but it really did make for a hot and cold season because one week, it's everyone's getting their willies cut off. <laughs> and then the next week, it's Sonny's murdering people or, it, or um, in uh, God's work. You know, it's a really serious storyline. So wait a minute. Like, people getting their mm. willies cut off was not serious to you? <laughs> That was not a serious episode. <laughs> Men were losing their wieners, and it was not serious. That was a joking episode. Uh, 
<laughs> we also officially said goodbye to the Nugman. Oh, thank God. He's gone. Yeah, but not Izzy. We miss you, Charlie Barnett. No, we don't. <laughs> yes, we do. As I mentioned before, there was also the illegal use of lightning and amen send money. A frozen Rastafarian escape. This was just aliens and missing hours. What about Tubbs in the fan boat? He also learned how to put an alligator to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that is a skill. Oh, yeah. The, the Native on. American alligator wrestling. And he took the best fan boat yeah, right And what life. about what about Montana, the undercover homeless person? You know, from Badge of Dishonor. It constantly sees things that doesn't say anything, but yeah. they're supposed to mourn her death at <laughs> yeah, the like, end of what? the episode. <laughs> a lot of stuff happened to Sonny in this season. He shot a kid. He killed many, many drug dealers, including a drug dealer's wife on accident. He didn't kill her. Her husband killed her. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> he got shot. His wife and unborn child got killed. He murdered someone in cold blood. He almost died again and became a murderous badass. And then he also like ran into Stevie or Jimmy, Johnny, Billy, Teddy, Eddie, Billy, Bi Billy, <laughs> Billy. No, that's right. He rekindled his relationship with Billy for an episode and then and for he, a few minutes. In his wedding. <laughs> it's okay. Billy has a new dad. Well, it's all right. Actually, it was good. It was good that we, we got a chance to, to see Billy again because we learned that Billy's mom, Crockett's ex, remarried, and the guy she married has a kid who turns out to be Doogie Hauser. <laughs> so Billy's... <laughs> Billy's stepbrother's Doogie Howser, um, <laughs> you know, and he's in a stable home. Everything's going good for them. So, so and I was worried because, you know, Crockett's kind of an absentee parent. <laughs> and just to check in with the rest of the crew, what happened to them in season four? Trudy met some aliens. Uh, Stan worked on his magic. Stan got a hot dog and screwed <laughs> up everything. <laughs> Trudy's getting a lot more comfortable with killing people. That too. <laughs> Castillo let two guys fight to death because they know some martial arts. And Gina, well, that Frank Mosca thing happened. She so. killed another man. Just say it. She killed another man. She's, she's a black widow. She's a black widow. <laughs> this season gets a bad rap and not without merit. It really struggles. And the episodes that are bad, it really does struggle. But the episodes that are good are so good. They're some of the show's best throughout the entire run of the show. In the top five, I bet you three of the top five episodes in the history of my advice will be in season four. Mm -hmm. They're just surrounded by this other nonsense that makes you forget that these really strong episodes yeah. are in the very middle and especially mm -hmm. at the very end of the season. Yeah, it was almost like reverse season two because you remember we had Phil the Shill, which was a really goofy episode. It was like the opposite. Like we had in season two, they had a hint, they had like three goofy, really goofy episodes and then a bunch of serious ones in between. And it was like the opposite. I would say from my perspective, so just to give my final thoughts on season four, it was a real mixed bag. The episodes that were good, I really did enjoy. I had a lot of fun with this season because of the silliness. Sometimes, you know what, that's okay. It's okay that it's a bad episode, but it's still a lot of fun. Sometimes that stuff's okay. It's all right, people. It's okay for there to be a bad episode, but still think it's a lot of fun. Melissa, what are your final thoughts on season four? I, I never thought this this season was that bad, to be honest with you. I, like I said, it has a lot of strong episodes in it. There are now, if you're talking in terms of the goofy episodes, these are the goofiest of them all. We've got, obviously, I mean, you can't beat trudy and what we think maybe aliens are also a dream with jars of peanut butter and <laughs> random james brown places so you can't beat that but i also think it's obviously got some of the hardest hitting episodes emotionally for the whole the whole arc you know whole story everything the whole run of it and it leads up to season five which is a favorite of mine but it's also you know it's it's serious so john what are your final thoughts on season four uh, you know it was it was a lot of fun Good episodes were really good, and it left me really excited for season five. I, I loved how they ended the season, going into it, anticipating more badass Burnett and the Amnesia storyline that I'm hoping with season five. I hope they pick it up a little bit with the music. Vice, don't you ever <laughs> leave me with an episode without music again. <laughs> <laughs> don't you do it to me let's do a quick look forward to season five and what's what we can expect in season five i have a few notes here 
on what's coming up. So we know that the show's going to take a darker turn. Yes, very much so. It's, and it's a shorter season. So mm-hmm. they ended up did getting it full, but there's a couple lost episodes. So if you don't know, Vice decided to not air one episode on regular TV and then the show got canceled. Then I think I think the last episode there was a, there was the last episode that was on NBC, mm-hmm. and then they aired four additional episodes on USA yes. later. Those yes. are considered to be the lost episodes. Now they eventually showed them in rerun on NBC, all except one. All except one. And in place of that one, they did a call in where people could call NBC and vote for their favorite episode of season five, and they aired that episode in its place. So they technically did a rerun as their and, final and that, episode. There was also a writer strike at the beginning of season five, so the season didn't technically start until November. Gotcha. So that's why. It's- so we're gonna go through all of them. We have the lost episodes. We'll be able to watch those. And just remind for those who may not know that much about this podcast that we're watching me and john are watching it for the first time melissa's seen the show before we're gonna go through all the way through the end of season five we'll do our normal recap of the season we'll do a recap of vice as a whole too we'll do our clip show which w- next week we have a clip show that's going to be coming out and that's going to be like all of our best moments of the podcast from season four and then we'll do it again for s- season five but then we'll of course end our run on Miami Vice with a Miami Vice movie, the Michael Mann movie that came out much later, starring Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell. So we still have a long way to go to finish the season. We're super excited to get to season five. The two sad things I'm going to point out for season five, other than the story arcs that that are going to happen inside of it, is that Dick Wolf officially leaves as a producer on the show. He becomes the full-time executive producer of Law & Order, which is going to come out in 1990. Michael Mann is still credited as the executive producer, but it's kind of a hodgepodge. No one's really overseeing the day-to-day operations there. Also, Jan Hammer is officially done with Vice. He is no longer the executive producer of music on the show. Someone else comes in and finishes he, the music. He moved board. on to bigger. He moved on to bigger and better things like porn. <laughs> um, n- nature documentaries, those types Marrying of things. Marrying more people. Yeah. <laughs> weddings, more yes, weddings. More weddings. <laughs> he, he got pretty good at weddings, yes. <laughs> weddings and porn. <laughs> Anything else you guys to add to what to look forward to in season five? I am excited because Castillo's wife returns. His mm. ex-wife returns in an episode Ooh. in season five. And also we got, we could, obviously you talked about, we continue with the Lombard story. Without knowing what we're about to get into, can't wait for more of this version of Crockett. Kind of wondering if he shoots another member of the team. I'm just thinking it might happen. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a pretty good bad guy. He's almost gotten tough once. He might get him again. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, heat at gmail.com. Let us know what your favorite episode is of season four. We would love to hear it. We would also love to hear your feedback of what you think our picks are for season four. As I mentioned, next week, we will be having a clip show of all of our best moments of Go With The Heat in season four. So email us and let us know what your favorite moments from the podcast were too. We'll make sure to get those into the clip show. That's always a ton of fun putting together and listening to for us. Because it's just a reminder of all the silly things we've said over the last four months. <laughs> There's a lot of those. <laughs> Be sure to check out that website, go with the heat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us. You can find all the ways to subscribe. You can find all the ways to support us. Support step number one, come back next week and check out that clip show. We'd love for you to come back, listen to that clip show. Just have some fun. Just sit back and have some fun with your pals that go with the heat. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.